Hello, good evening. Good evening, Miss. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Thank you, teacher. Okay, we are in session number three. Tomorrow is the session number four, and we are going to end the first week. Estamos a punto de terminar la primera semana. And we are going to start week number two, and time is uh, really, really fast. So we are going to have, we are not going to feel this course, I guess, because it's a really, really fast. Así que vamos a ir, se siente como que vamos bastante rápido con el curso, porque el tiempo está pasando bastante rápido. So, we are going to start with the session number three, and we are going to continue with the topic that we were developing yesterday, and we were talking about the model, the model, and based on can and should. But yesterday we were talking about the um, all of the models that we have and what we can use those models. Estábamos hablando de cómo podíamos utilizar los modales. And also we were uh, seeing some examples. So let me share the screen because you can see the document in which we have the information. So let me fix this. Okay, this is the beginning of the topic, and we say that um, these words are a type of auxiliary verb that we can use to express ability, possibility, permission, or obligation. Lo vamos a utilizar como auxiliares para hablar o expresar habilidad una posibilidad, permiso o una obligación. And we have the list of models that are, can, could be able to. May and might, shall and should, must and have to, and will and will. Esos son todos los modales que nosotros tenemos en inglés, eh, o que son los más comunes en el inglés que nosotros estamos estudiando. Comenzamos con can and could and be able to. And we were talking about ability or lack of ability. Lo utilizamos para habilidades o la falta de estas. And we have some examples. Can or cannot plus the base form of the verb and the complement. And we have the first sentence. Sam can write poetry very well. I can help you with that next week. Lisa can speak French. Then we have the other ones, those are formulas for uh, be able to, and we have M is R plus will be plus able to plus base form of the verb. And also for the negative form, I'm not, is not, are not, plus one be, able to based on of the verb. And we have the examples. Mike is able to solve complicated math equations. The support team will be able to help you in about 10 minutes. I won't be able to visit you next summer. So we are going to continue from that point because we have uh, uh, more information about the model. So let's see. Then we have cool. There is another model that we have here. Cool. And we have, in this case, just one sentence that we can use, just like an example, because we know that this is the past form. And we have, when I was a child, I could clean trees. Este cool es el pasado de Ken. So in that case, it is not necessary to, to say a lot of things about this model. So in this case, it is the past. When I was a child, I 
Ay, Coquin, sí. Cuando yo era un niño, podía trepar árboles. So in that case, we know that we are talking about the past. Then we have possibility or impossibility. Algo que podemos hacer o algo que no podemos hacer. Una posibilidad o algo no posible. And we have the first, that is can or can, plus base form of the verb. We are going to use can or can. Plus base form of the verb. And we have two examples. Dos ejemplos para esa fórmula. You can catch that rain at 10.43. You can catch that rain at 10.43. Puedes tomar. Catch, we know that uh, that word means atrapar. In this case, based on the context, we know that we Take. Puedes tomar ese a las 10.43. Then we have the negative one. He can see you right now. He is in surgery. Él no puede verte en este momento o no puede atenderte en este momento porque está en cirugía. Then we have could, that is the past. And in this case, talking about possibility. En este caso vamos a hablar de posibilidad o imposibilidad usando el cool again. And for this one, we have cool plus base form of the verb. And we have one example. It could fly via Amsterdam If I lived the day before, I could fly if I leave the day before. Pude haber viajado en Amsterdam, la, la, la aerolínea Amsterdam, si sí, me hubiera ido el día anterior. In that case, we are talking about a possibility, but again, it is like impossibility because we cannot change the past in that case. Then, we need to ask for permission or to give permission to do something. Si queremos pedir permiso o dar permiso para alguna uh, acción, o alguna situación, we are going to use can and the subject plus the base form of the verb. And we have one example. It says, can you lend me $10? In this case, we have 
question. Can you lend me ten dollars? It's like we can say, me podría prestar, me podría dar si eh, diez dólares. Es, estamos preguntando por algo. Then, can plus base form of the verb again. And in this case, it is like a, a positive sentence. En este caso no tenemos la pregunta, sino una oración positiva. You can borrow my car. Puedes tomar prestado mi carro. Puedes tomar mi carro. Le estamos dando permiso para tomar el auto. <coughs> Then we have could plus subject. plus subject plus base form of the verb. And in this case, we have two examples. Could I have your number? Podría tener tu número? Could I talk to your supervisor, please? Then, We need to make a suggestion. Queremos sugerir algo. Vamos a utilizar cool plus base form of the verb. And we have the example. You could take the tour of the castle tomorrow. And in this case, we are just um, using these uh, words to make suggestions to ask for permission. And in this case, it's to sound more polite, para sonar más respetuoso, eh, o que suene más formal, in this case. And also, we can create sentences, positive sentences, negative sentences, and also questions. But it is not like we are going to stop a lot of in this topic because we have another topic for today. But first, I have a short exercise. Vamos a hacer un pequeño ejercicio. Five sentences and you are going to tell me what is the correct answer. Vamos a hacer un pequeño ejercicio. Voy a poner las oraciones. Ustedes me van a decir cuál es la mejor opción para cada una de esas oraciones. And we are just going to use can, could, and be able to. Solo vamos a utilizar can, could, be able to, que es, es ser capaz de.
Me la saco hasta... Uy, me golpeaste. Okay, we have five sentences in which we need to see what are the best options that we have for them. Remember, we have can, could, be able to. Sentence number one. Tony ran long distances when he was a child. En este caso tenemos una pregunta, nos falta una palabra para darle el sentido. Pero básicamente dice que si sí, Tony largas distancias cuando era un niño. Number two, you please call a tow truck for me. Se puede llamar, ¿verdad? Una grúa en este caso, por él o por ella. Number three, the students to buy their textbooks today. The bookstore is all of, um, of them. Los estudiantes, sus libros de texto hoy, porque la librería ya no tiene ese tipo de libros. Entonces, en este caso sería como una eh, una imposibilidad. No pudieron hacerlo. Number four, you teach me how to fix my computer. Una pregunta. You are so good at it. Enseñarme cómo arreglar mi computadora. Tú eres muy bueno en eso. And number five, in this case, we need to You reach the customer if you call him at for this time tú al eh, cliente si lo llamas a las 4 a esta hora o a las 4, ¿verdad? Entonces necesitamos saber cuáles son las palabras que van a completar esas oraciones. I will give you time to think about the words and the sentences, and then we are going to say what are the answers. So, right now, you have a couple of minutes to complete the sentences uh, or to find the words that you need.
Okay, let's see. For the first one, for the question, what is the word that we can uh, use in this question because you are talking about something in the past that happened when Tony was a child? What is the word that we can use? Can't. Can't. Mm, we are talking about past. Hablamos del pasado. Cold. Cold. Good. Cold. Cool. 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 Tony wrong long distances when he was a child. Podía, o, o en ese entonces podía Tony correr grandes distancias cuando era un niño. Then, number two. You please call a tow truck for me. What is the, the word? Can. 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 Mm, yes, it could be. But if we are talking about very, very polite, like in this sentence, we can change that can for other words. What is the other word? Si lo vamos a hacer de manera muy respetuosa, o sea, siendo bien respetuosa o que no conocemos a esa persona, tenemos Me. la otra opción. Cool. En la que, ah, cool. Can es como bastante informal en cool. We know that is the past, but also we can use it for these kind of sentences. Lo podemos utilizar también para estas oraciones donde nosotros no conocemos a la persona y somos muy, muy respetuosos a la hora de hablar, ¿verdad? So in this case, we can use cool, pero también podemos utilizar el can si no somos muy formales. Then, the students, in este caso, is something negative? Can. 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 Are able. Ah, uh -huh. tiene que ver con be able, pero necesitamos cambiar el be. Estamos hablando de ellos. What is the word that we are going to use? R. R. Yes, but in this case, we are going to transform that R in negative. Aren't able. No fueron capaces de comprar. In that case, aren't able to buy their textbook. Number four. In this case, maybe we are talking with a friend. Estamos hablando con un amigo, alguien que ya conocemos. ¿Sí? Yes. Can. Can. And the last one, we have two. If we are going to talk about future, si vamos a hablar del futuro, ¿qué podemos utilizar para el futuro? Make. Mm -mm. Oh, ¿Qué palabra utilizamos okay. para el futuro? Well, will. 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 Be able. Will. Ah, be able. Will. Podría ser capaz de contactar o de encontrarse con el, el, el cliente si lo llama o podrías encontrar al cliente si lo llamas a las cuatro good solo recuerden que en este caso el cool nosotros lo vamos a utilizar de dos formas si estamos hablando del pasado si tenemos algunas acciones en pasado nosotros ya sabemos básicamente que lo vamos a utilizar, pero si estamos hablando con alguien que no conocemos y queremos sonar así como muy respetuoso, porque obviamente no conocemos a la persona, vamos a utilizar cool. Pero si es una persona que sí conocemos, con la que convivimos o es un amigo, podemos ser un poco más informales y vamos a utilizar can. Cuando tengamos be able to, tenemos que fijarnos si... Eh, estamos utilizando, por ejemplo, el singular o el plural y cambiar, ¿verdad? Are able to, is able to, am able to. El verbo to be, eh, to be también va a tener algunos cambios 
cuando utilicemos el be able to. Y en el caso de utilizar be able to en forma negativa, vamos a agarrar la forma que necesitamos del verbo am, is, are, not able to. Teacher, tengo una pregunta. Dígame. Este, así como could se puede usar en pasado, quería saber en qué momentos puedo yo usar could y en qué momentos puedo usar was, was able to o were able to. Oh, in that case, when you are, in that case, when you are using the be able to, y lo va a utilizar en el pasado, si usted está hablando de una acción en el pasado, por ejemplo, eh, yo no fui eh, capaz de, I was not able to, una acción en el pasado de la cual no fue capaz de realizar. En ese caso, como está utilizando el, el verbo to be, ahí cambia el verbo to be, ha pasado, was and were. Y el cool, en ese caso, no es cuando hablamos de ser capaz de, porque el be able to es diferente al can. El can es puedo o pude, pero el be able to es ser capaz de hacer alguna acción o no ser capaz de hacer alguna acción. En el caso de I could buy a ticket, pude comprar un ticket. Esa es la, la, la oración. Y en el otro, I was not able to buy a ticket because I don't have money or I didn't have money. No fui capaz de comprar el ticket porque no tenía dinero. Uno es, pude o no pude hacerlo, y el otro es, no fui capaz por alguna situación. También he visto que could lo utilizan como este... Eh, un, ¿cómo se le llama esto? Lo acabo de tener en la, en la, en la, en la lengua. Este, bueno, en realidad es una palabra así como would, no, condicionada, condicionado, ¿verdad? Good. Uh -huh. Podría ser un condicionado también, could. Un condicional. Sí, este, cuando, digamos, este, no, ¿cómo se le llama a estos? Similar a would it should. Ah, es que en este caso el cool es parte de este tema, que son los modal verbs. Y es sí. parte del should, del cool, el my, el, el, el my, el shall, el should. Son parte de eso. Sí lo vamos a ver con otros, eh, en otras formas, porque sí se utilizan tanto con los diferentes tiempos en pasado. Nosotros podemos utilizar el cool. Acuérdense que en inglés siempre vamos utilizando todas esas palabras de nuevo para diferentes cosas. Entonces siempre lo vamos a utilizar de muchas otras formas. No solo tienen una forma, sino que tienen muchas. Entonces, tenemos que ir viendo en cuáles nosotros lo vamos a utilizar para no confundirnos. Pero sí, son parte de, de otras eh, categorías también. Gracias, teacher. Gracias. You're welcome. So, in that case, we have this uh, topic of the, uh, of the model verse. And also, you are going to see again this topic because this is not the first time you are going to see Uh, this topic we are going to see a lot of times, like the verb to be. You know that the verb to be is one of the basic uh, topics that we learn in English, and in this case, you are going to develop this uh, topic again in the future, but you have some ideas about them and how to use this, uh, uh, this word. So, Now, we are going to change the topic and we are going to talk about vocabulary. Vamos a crear vocabulario. Vamos a eh, ver algunas palabras. They are kind of basic because I know that some of these words are very easy for you. But we are going to have this topic. Let me move to another page. And the topic is Common Health Problems. Common health problems, and we have here vocabulary. 
Teacher, is other time a uh, topic? Tell me. Is other topic? Out of topic. Yeah, or it's new topic. It's a new topic. We, we have two topics for today. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, this is the second topic that we have, and it is common health problems, because, you know, if you can see uh, the topics on the platform, we have this one um, after the topic that we were developing. So, in this case, we have the common health problems, and we are going to see some questions, some basic questions and answers that we can use when we are talking about health. Vamos a ver unas cuantas preguntas que tienen que ver con eh, salud. Eh, ¿Cómo podemos responder esas preguntas? Y luego vamos a ver un pequeño vocabulario de problemas comunes de la salud. So, we have the most common ways to ask about someone's health are if you want to know how is someone, how is feeling, or uh, that person is sick, you can ask the following questions. And we have here a short list of questions. We have number one. How do you feel today? How do you feel today? This question is when you see someone or you are uh, talking on the phone or you are sending messages and you can ask uh, the other um, person how is feeling, how do you feel today? And that person is going to tell you if uh, he or she is feeling good, is feeling sick, is feeling bad, or something like that. Number two, how are you feeling in this moment? How are you feeling? It's almost the same. Okay, regreso. Okay, hi, teacher. Hello. I'm having trouble Hi, again teacher. with the connection. Hello, I'm here again. Don't worry. Because it's, it's starting to rain right now. So I'm going to have trouble. Teacher, di disculpe. Me sí. parece que su micrófono tiene así como una interferencia. Como que tuviera un ventilador cerca. Y eso dificulta en alguna medida escucharle claramente la pronunciación. O no sé si está lloviendo, desconozco, pero sí se oye un zumbidito ahí, una interferencia. Yo creo que ha de ser, ha de ser por la lluvia. Ah, sí, okay. it's, it's, uh, it's raining right now. So in that case, you're going to have some, some sounds, but let me see if I can do something. Give me a second. Ok. Se fue de nuevo. ¿Qué onda, Santi? ¿Arreglaste? ¿Arreglaste tu problema? Sí, sí, ya, ya solucionamos ahí con la plataforma. ¿Ya empezaste a trabajar? Ya. Ok, yo casi termino la sección 2. Oh, my God. Ale, ale. Sí. Bárbara, yo ni he comenzado. But you have to do, you have to work in the platform. <laughs> Let me change my connection because I know that it's going to be hard for the internet connection because it's starting raining kind of hard. But I'm going to change it because I don't want to leave you alone again. Let me see if I can change it.
padre. Just come. Okay. okay, I'm here. And I guess it is not going to fail. Okay. So, I hope that you are hearing better the sound. I don't know if you can hear clearly right now. No sé si logran escuchar mejor ahora o todavía hay interferencia o algo por el estilo. Siempre se oye cortado. Pero ya es menos. Siempre es menos. Y listen fine. Ok. Um, I try to fix all the problems, but I don't know why I am having that kind of uh, situations because I change the connection of the internet to make it better and also change a little bit of things. I'm hoping that you can hear better now. So then we have question number three and it says, is everything okay? That is a very basic question. It's everything okay. Todo está bien. That is like a very general question in that case. But you can find a lot of um, answer with that question. Ustedes preguntan eso, es una pregunta bastante básica, pero pueden encontrar diferentes respuestas. Ahora, ¿cómo respondemos nosotros a esas preguntas? Si alguien nos pregunta a nosotros. How do you feel today? How are you feeling? Is everything okay? And we are feeling bad or we are feeling sick. We have here some answers. Um, short, uh, short answers, yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Of course. I'm good. I'm great. Yes, good. Fantastic. In that case, you are not feeling sick or you are not feeling tired. But when you are feeling tired, how can you answer those questions? I need some rest. Oh, good, good. So in this case, I'm fine, as you said, I'm fine. Then I feel sick. Not so good. Not very well. I don't feel well. And I am sick. In this case, there are very short answers. But you can um, add all the information that you want in your answers. For example, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling tired because I work it a lot today and I have more things to do in my house. Or I'm feeling good because I take some hours to rest or I find that I win something, you can add all the information that you want for this question. Now, what is the vocabulary or what are the words that we need to know that are very, very basic about this topic um, in which we are talking about uh, health problems? And we have a short list. It is not like very, very long. And we are going to see vocabulary. We have the first one, an allergy. This is easy to understand that we are talking about allergia. We are having allergy. Tenemos allergia. Then we have asthma, que también es bastante fácil de entender que es asthma. This one. The flu. The third one. What is in Spanish? 
Yeah, uh, catarro, flu, gripe. Yes, but in this case, backlash. The word number three, what do you think? What is the meaning? Dolor de espalda. Oh, good, dolor de espalda. Number four, a broken leg. A broken leg. Fractura de pierna. Mm -hmm. Una fractura en la pierna, una pierna quebrada, como comúnmente se dice. Then we have the next one. This is very easy because it is the same uh, written form, just the pronunciation is different. Cancer. But in Spanish is cancer. Pero se pronuncia diferente. But in this case, it is not like we are going to use the Spanish word. A call. In this case, a call. Resfriado. Resfriado. Yeah, of course. The next one, a cough. A cough. Tos. Mm-hmm, good. This is not like very, very beautiful word, but it is a health problem. And we can know what is the meaning of this word, but you know, you know, you know. And diarrhea is different pronunciation from the Spanish and also has um kind of different um written form but in spanish is diarrhea it's almost the same uh, but with some uh, letters that in, we can in spanish add. is in spanish is correcto del canso <laughs> yes we can say that it is uh, the meaning it sounds better in that way then we have an Eric, an ear, H. It is almost the same with the number, I mean, in the number. Dolor de oído. Yes, it's dolor de oído. Then we have fever. Fever. Fiebre. 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 Yes. The flu. Gripe. Mm -hmm. Resfriado. Resfriado fuerte, ¿verdad? The flu. Then, a headache. Dolor de cabeza. Dolor de cabeza. Dolor de cabeza. O migraña. Yes. This one, let's see this one. A uh, health born. Health born. Como dolor para cardíaco o dolor de corazón o algo así. Mm, sí tiene que ver con la palabra corazón, but it's not like that. No es un paro cardíaco. It's something different. Es una como arritmia. No. Dolor de corazón. Mm, no. <risa> Tenemos dos palabras. Herbic, que es corazón. En born. Italiano. Infarto, no. No. Born. Es, ¿Qué es born? Como. Como quemado. Mm -hmm. Es como un fuego, sí. como una quemada. ¿Serán agruras? Yes, it has to be. Tiene que ver con eso de las agruras o el reflujo. Así es. Es, born. es algo que quema por el lado del corazón. Eh, se, se le pone de esta manera, eh, because of the feeling, 
por el, el sentimiento, por cómo se siente. But it is related to agruras o gastritis. Ajá. So, eso es, es cuando en los líquidos, Así ¿verdad? Es. Reflujo. Ajá. Reflujo, dijo. Ella. Ah, está el reflujo o lo que conocemos como acidez estomacal. Like that. El head burn. Then we have another one. Let's see this one. Let's see um, the next one. Tell me. I hear something, but I don't know. I'm not sure. Then this one. Miss Left. Dolor de cuerpo. Mm, es un síntoma de, pero no es eso. A clue, let's see a clue. It's something on the skin. In some, in some cases. Quemada. Mm, sarampión. Yes, sarampión. Miss Left. Sarampión. Teacher, to H? To H? What? To H. Es dolor de muelas. Yes. Yes. That is one uh, also. One word that we can use. Then, this one, this word is in the last years it becomes very famous because we have this word in a lot of explanation of the different uh, sickness or disease that we have um, in our country and the word is rash rash sarpullido sarpullido rash es el sarpullido nosotros normalmente lo conocemos como sarpullido, pero últimamente se ha hecho famoso por la palabra rash. Ahora lo llamamos rash. Then, we have sore throat. Sore throat. I'm feeling something in my throat. What is sore throat? <coughs> dolor de garganta. Mm -hmm. Es como tener la garganta adolorida o irritada. Then we have this one that is a sprain. A sprain. Brain. Uh, como dolo, uh, doblez de la del pie o esguince 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 good es un esguince sprain es esguince Then we have another one. Dolor de estómago. Ah, uh -huh, dolor de estómago. This Estoy one is hecho. also one of these uh, words that we are very familiar with, and it is sunburn. 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 Sun. Quemada. Quemadura de sol, algo así. Mm -hmm. Es cuando nos exponemos mucho al sol y tenemos una de esas quemadas que nos queda del sol cuando nos hemos bronceado de más. 
Then we have this one that is uh, another one that is very um, easy to understand. Dolor de muela. Mm -hmm. Dolor de muelas. Exactamente. And that's why I was saying that all of these words, many of them are very um, easy for us because they are very, very basic in this kind of vocabulary. But there are one or two words that are are kind of different, and that's why we don't uh, know, or maybe we are not like very familiar with the meaning that make us to think about uh, the meaning of the word. Pero no son todas, son unas cuantas, pero obviamente sabemos que hay muchas más palabras que tienen que ver con esto de, de el health, de las enfermedades, de la salud. And also, in this case, we are not just talking about uh, the, um, the sickness or words related to sickness. We can also talk about uh, the words that we can use when we are in a meeting with the doctor. Also, we can use words that are or elements that we can find in the place or in the, in the hospital, something like that. But in this case, you are going to use the vocabulary for the exercises that you are going to develop on the platform. Remember that you have to work on section one and two for the first week. And tomorrow is the last day of this first week because we are going to have four days. Así que si no han avanzado con la plataforma o tienen algún problema con ella, pueden eh, pedir ayuda, ¿verdad? Y se les va a ayudar con los ejercicios. I don't know if you are having troubles with the platform because in the other group, eh, someone said that eh, she doesn't have the access to the platform or something like that. I don't know if you are having troubles or everything is okay with the platform. Everything is okay. Ahora sí, teacher, porque yo no la tenía habilitado el curso número 3. Ok, ok. Pero ya todo está bien. Sí, sí, ahora me, me lo habilitaron. Oh, that's good. Uh, someone else or everything is ok? Uh, teacher, yo tengo problemas oh. con unas audios del, de la sección 2. No, 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 no se pueden escuchar, no sé por qué. Section 2. Let me see. I'm going to check if it is problem of the platform. I'm going to tell the support team to fix that. So let me go to the platform here. Porque a veces eh, hay problemas con los documentos, cómo se suben, entonces eh, se puede decirles a los de support que lo arreglen. So, let me see the section two. Okay, okay, okay. Give me a second, it is charging to see if it is working or not. Section number two of, let me see. Okay, section two. In which um, exercise? See, I have 2.6, it is not in 2.6, but it's, or, or it is um, one of the videos. Oh, it is the 2.13, listening try this, in that exercise. Yes. 
No, but Welcome it's working. Assist. Check each person's problem. One. I know that if mm -hmm. it is not working, si no, si no está funcionando en la plataforma, tiene como una flechita en una de las esquinas, le okay. puede dar clic ahí y la va a mandar, eh, va a abrir el audio en una nueva ventana y va a funcionar. Porque a veces en, el, en la plataforma no funciona, pero sí la redirige a otra ventana y puede que funcione. Ok, este, um, perfecto, voy a, voy a ver si lo puedo hacer uh -huh. eh, más tarde. Pero el, fíjese que tengo, me he complicado un poco con el ejercicio 2.6, en okay. donde aparece, es, un, es, es parte de la tarea. Entonces, en la en sección 4, eh, ahí supuestamente tenemos que poner, ¿verdad? Eh, como recomendación, porque no aparecen las opciones, sino que uno tiene que ponerlas. Pero ya intenté de muchas formas y no me da. Ok, 2.6, en donde dice, What should I do for our students? It is important a dentist. Yes, in that, yes. Uh, yo dije two, the, two visits, two visits, okay. y no me, no me corresponde. En este caso, it is not to visit, es to see, porque en este caso no va a visitar al, al dentista, sino va a ver para una revisión, to see, va a escribir to see, eh, minúscula, porque en este caso es like this, see. to see, okay, see. The, I mean, to see, like okay. this, to see. Ok, perfecto, uh -huh. ya. Sí, eso es lo único que me faltaba, teacher. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. So, if you are having troubles like this in the platform, you can uh, tell me in the sessions and we can uh, work on the exercises in which you are having trouble. And if you can hear some audio, you can do uh, the things that I am saying. You can click on that uh, space that is in one of the the spaces in, in, in the audio, and it's going to have another uh, window. And you can hear, but it is not working. You can tell me, and I will ask you for um, for the team support to see that problem. So we are going to end the session here, and we are going to see each other tomorrow. Have a really good night. Night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night. See you. You're welcome. Good night, Miss. Good night. Good night.